Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'll be talking about how to grow a giant sunflower and I'll be specifically focusing on the soil preparation and also planting location of your giant sunflower. So this is a multi-part series about how to grow a giant sunflower. This is the third video and in this one I'll be talking about the climate that you need, the, the appropriate light levels, temperature and how to improve the soil to get the most from your giant sunflower. So the previous videos I've done is about the picking the right variety and sowing the seeds so you can watch those videos they should already be online this one as I say is more like the next step when it comes to getting the, the site ready for planting the sunflower so when it comes to sunflowers it's quite important to think about the climate so in this video I'll be talking about the absolute perfect environment for growing the absolute tallest sunflower now you can obviously grow sunflowers in worse conditions but this video is just a very in-depth detailed guide on how to grow the absolute biggest possible so when it comes to climate the ideal climate is actually somewhere further north in the latitude so somewhere like Europe or North America the reasons are sunflowers do best in warm weather long sunlight hours and lots of sunlight so if you're too close to the equator the temperatures tend to be a bit too hot and tropical for sunflowers and also the daylight isn't as long so basically in summertime there's nice long days the further north you go whereas in the tropics you normally only get about 12 hours of daylight ideally 18 hours of daylight would be optimum but the problem is if you go too not far north like somewhere like scotland or scandinavia the temperatures get a little bit cold and you get out of that optimum growing space also the light levels get a bit too weak as well so one of the best places in the world and it's very famous for sunflowers is ukraine it's got very good rich soil it's in that kind of goldilocks zone where it's not too far north that the sun's too weak and it's too cold and it's not too far south that the uh, temperatures are too high and the days are too short so basically if you want to get the absolute best growing conditions for giant sunflowers that kind of region of the world is ideal but you can go north or south and you'll still get great results so in the ideal locations such as ukraine the thing that sunflowers really like is a warm growing location but not excessively hot so the average high for most days should be about 25 degrees celsius anywhere between 20 degrees and 30 degrees celsius is a reasonable range but around the 25 degrees celsius is when sunflowers seem to do at their absolute best and you get the most growth possible they also like very strong light levels so growing it over summertime is quite important and summer with decent light levels lots of sunshine but they also are a very thirsty plant so they'll need a lot of water over the summer. So if you're growing them in arid regions, they will need a lot of water. Ukraine has a nice climate where it has that mix. It has about 80 millimeters of rain over a lot of the summer months. That gives them enough water to grow well, but there's not too many rainy days that they're getting a lot of shade from the cloud and that will also stunt their growth. So maximum sunshine possible, but also plenty of water is very important. Now, although sunflowers do come from North America and that's a natural environment where they originally come from, they can tolerate drought because of that, as a lot of the places that grows naturally is quite dry over the summer. But the thing is, although that they can tolerate drought, they will grow a lot smaller and they'll become stressed. So if a sunflower becomes stressed, what will happen is it will go to the flower sooner and the sooner it starts to form its flower head the less height it will grow in total basically with sunflowers as they grow over the year they grow lots of leaves to begin with and they keep gaining more and more height and then as soon as the flower bud starts to form they're not going to grow much taller and once the flower is fully formed that's them at the final height so you want to delay flowering for as long as possible and one way to do that is to reduce the stress level which is why temperatures are quite important and also watering levels but as i say they are quite adaptable plants they can grow in a very wide range of temperatures as low as 5 degrees Celsius and as high as 40 degrees Celsius, that's generally the growing range. But if you can keep it around the 25 degrees Celsius range, then you'll get the best results. So another important factor for sunflowers is wind levels. So sunflowers don't do well in high wind level locations. The reason being, when it's windy, it dries out the plants very quickly. They need to absorb huge amounts of water to replace the water lost through wind. And they just struggle to absorb it fast enough and they'll get a little bit of drought stress. So even if there's plenty of water in the ground, if it's a very windy day with strong sunshine, they can still get drought stress as their roots can't absorb the water fast enough. So you really want to avoid wind. The other reason you want to avoid wind is it stresses the plant. What it does, as well as droughting it, is it flexes the stem. As the stems get flexed, the plant then knows that it needs to acclimatize and strengthen its stems so that the plant isn't as badly affected by the wind. So what it will do, it will slow down its growth it will grow less tall which is the opposite of what you want if you want to grow a giant sunflower so it will thicken the stems which will make it stronger which is good because it will be less likely to snap but it'll get a much shorter plant lots much slower growing plant 
and so you won't get that true giant height that you're looking for. Another thing that wind can do is if it's too strong it can actually stress the plant enough that it will cause it to flower a little bit earlier and the other problem is towards the end of the season if it's very strong winds it can easily snap branches off or even blow the entire plant over so you really need to be quite careful when it comes to wind. Now a little bit of wind is beneficial especially in slightly warmer climates as it keeps the plant leaves a little bit cool if it's very strong sunshine and also some very gentle wind is beneficial for the plant because when it photosynthesizes it needs to absorb lots of carbon dioxide and put out oxygen so if there's a small amount of airflow around the leaves that just helps it to breathe a little bit better and replace the oxygen it gives out with new carbon dioxide if it's completely stagnant air it just runs a little bit less efficiently as it can't exchange the gases quite as well but ideally the less wind the better because even in somewhere that's very stagnant with wind you still always get a tiny bit of wind so I'll now go outside in my garden I'll have a look at the aspect and what aspect will be best for the plant. So when it comes to growing sunflowers it's very important to know what aspect to grow them in. Now this is my house and I personally grow them on a south facing aspect against a white wall. So this is the plot I'll be using as a reference today when it comes to planting up the soil and, and the aspect. So I live in North Scotland, it's a cool climate. If you're living in a climate that's around about 20 degrees Celsius has the average maximum or less in the midsummer months then you want to really maximise the warmth and the sunlight levels. So if you can get a white wall ideally if I had this as a south facing wall but this is actually more of a north east facing wall this would be ideal because it's really high massive height that could get really good shelter and lots of light reflecting off of the wall that would be an ideal place for a sunflower but as I say that's north facing for me or north east facing so that's not ideal so what I have instead is I have an, a south east facing wall which is my next best option. If, but if you can, get a south facing wall in a cool climate if it's below 20 degrees on average in midsummer and that extra light and heat bouncing off the wall will really help your sunflower to grow better. Now if you're living in a warm climate, so most places in the world to be honest, I would count as a warm temperate climate. So Europe, North America, uh, probably Northern China, places like that. So those kind of places will probably have temperatures around 25 degrees Celsius as the maximum in the middle of summer on most days on average. Obviously it can get up to higher on a, hot, on a hot day but on average about 25 degrees Celsius. What you actually want is an open space. So for example in this garden if I was living in a warmer climate I would probably choose a spot so like over here in the garden. The reason being that would have sun all day long as the sun goes around because normally the sun would go around at least 180 degrees so for example the, the sun was, would rise in that corner over there go right around 180 degrees or more if you're further north and set over there so if it's an open space it's going to get the maximum light possible make sure there's no trees overhead really big open space and get all the light it can and you want to have it in an open space so there's a bit of airflow because if you had it on a south facing wall in a warm climate it would get too hot and it would get stressed from the heat and it just wouldn't grow quite as well. So an open space would be an ideal place in most climates. Now if you are living in the tropics or a hot country, and when I say hot, that can include parts of North America which might have cold weather in the winter but really hot summers. So I would think of hot as about 30 degrees or more on average in the middle of the day in midsummer. So if it is that hot, then you want to do the opposite thing and you want to actually find a slightly shadier location. So if you're growing it somewhere that warm in, in the tropics, you would probably want an east or west facing wall, possibly even a north facing wall. You basically want to shelter it from the midday sun if possible. So you might want to plant it underneath a tree. So if you've got trees nearby, maybe underneath a canopy of a tree would be an ideal location. As long as it still gets a lot of sunlight for most of the day, you still want to give as much sun as possible. You just want to avoid the midday sun so it doesn't get too hot. And you also want it in quite an open location just so there's a good amount of airflow and also if it's a tropical climate with lots of humidity you want good airflow otherwise you can get fungal diseases so if it's 30 degrees or more you want a little bit of shade in midday just to make sure it's a bit more sheltered and doesn't overheat and get too hot so the next thing I'd like to go into into a bit more detail is soil so soil preparation is one of the most important things you can do for your sunflower to get the most from it basically you want the sunflower to grow as best as possible and not be hindered by uh, its nutrient uptake or its water uptake so you need to make sure you've got some really good soil for your plant. Now sunflower plants they like really deep rich fertile soil that's well drained so they don't like their roots being in water otherwise they'll rot off and die and they need to grow really quite deep roots. They can grow over three meters in depth or nine feet so they are very deep rooted plants but interestingly although they can grow very deep roots most of the feeding roots and the vast majority of the roots in the plant are actually in the top foot to uh, two foot of soil so the most important thing is the top 
one or two foot of sole is well amended. The deeper sole isn't quite as important, but if you want to get the absolute tallest, then you want to make sure it is deep soil. So although they like a rich, free draining soil, they're not too fussy when it comes to soil type. They'll, they'll grow in sandy soil, loam soil, even a bit of clay soil. As long as it's not very heavy clay and it's not waterlogged, then they should be happy with most soils but you want to make sure you improve it as much as possible just to get the best results. So the first thing I'm going to do here is clear off the weeds. So it's important that there's not any weeds on the site. You can see this is currently full of lots of weeds. I'm going to be removing these now. So the reason you want to remove the weeds is the weeds will be competing for the sunflower for nutrients and, and for water. And even at the seedling stage, they'll be competing for light. So you want to remove any competition. That means all the water and all the nutrients in the soil is readily available to the sunflower and it's not competing against anything to try and get that. And as I say, with the root system of the sunflower, 80% of the sunflower roots are actually in the surface. Although it's a deep rooted plant, most of the feeding roots are at the surface. So what you want to do is get the surface as rich as possible. And when it comes to feeding later on in the season, that's the part you need to really focus on. And it's quite important that you keep the top layer of soil nice and damp, even though it can survive drought and there'll be water deeper down. If the top of the soil dries out, it will just stress it a little bit and you'll get a smaller plant and it'll grow less less tall so it's really important the top of the soil is, is looked after so to do that one of the best ways is to add lots of organic matter or compost so I'll be doing this with my garden I'll be using my own homemade compost that I've got here but any kind of multi-purpose compost will work well so you want to add a huge amount to the soil the more the better pretty much as long as it's not more than 50% of what the soil is made out of that will really help because it increases the water carrying capacity of the soil so if there's any dry weather it basically acts like a sponge soaks up the water and then it'll allow it to be used by the sunflower as it needs it. That also works in tandem with the nutrients it, as it's a sponge and most nutrients is kept in water as it dissolves salts. It'll help to hold nutrition for the soil and so that it can get all the nutrients that it needs. So lots of organic matter is very important and now you want to dig it as deep as you can. As I say, the first foot or two is the most important, but when sunflower plants are grown in normal soil, they'll normally have most of the feeder roots just in the first 20 centimeters or just a bit more of soil. But if you can deepen the soil, the feeder roots will go deeper. Basically, the sunflower will respond to how the soil is and it'll put its feeder roots into more soil to a deeper location if there is more soil available. And so the advantage of that is it has a bigger root system. There's more area for it to absorb nutrients and water. And so it will grow much better for it. Now, when it comes to pH, it's not too important when it comes to the pH of the soil. They're not too fussy sunflowers, but ideally you want it around neutral. So somewhere between six and a half to seven and a half on the pH scale is perfect. But as I say, it's not a massive important issue with sunflowers. As long as it's roughly neutral, that's fine. For my garden, for example, I have a slightly acidic soil being in North Scotland, so I'll be adding a little bit of wood ash just to make it more neutral soil. And whilst I'll be digging it, what you'll see is when I'm preparing the soil, I'll be putting in a few powders. One of them is bloodfish and bone. That is a slow release organic fertilizer. Now you want to make sure the soil is really rich so there's lots of nutrition ready for the sunflower from the beginning. I will also talk about feeding in videos coming up because feeding throughout the season is also very important. But if you can get a good rich soil to begin with, it just makes it a bit easier because if you forget to feed one week, then there's still gonna be some feed in the soil for the plant. And also if you're using a slow release organic feed, it also feeds the microbes in the soil and the fungus. And that's what you want to also improve because if you have really good microbiome in the soil, you'll have better structure. Part of that is adding the compost and organic matter because that feeds the, the microbes, but it also improves the texture of the soil. Adding all the organic matter will make it nice and loose and allow the roots to grow easily through the soil. And also with the microbes, they'll be tunneling through the soil and they make small air spaces and also gaps for the roots to grow. So it just makes the roots grow a lot easier and a lot deeper and then the plant will get better established. And tying into that, one thing you can also do to improve the growth rate of your sunflowers is to add some mycorrhizal fungi. So I'll be adding that, that'll be one of the powders I'll be putting in, the mycorrhizal fungi, what it does is it attaches to the roots of the plant. It makes a relationship with the plant where they benefit each other. So the fungi, what it does is it gets sugars from the plant, which it helps it to grow. And in return, it, it passes water and nutrients to the sunflower. So the reason you want to use mycorrhizal fungi is because they have a network of little filaments that go out into the soil, which is much, much thinner than the roots of the plant. And it can get in between all the soil spaces that the plant's roots can't. So it's effectively, making the root system of the plant much much larger without the plant having to put much energy into investing a larger root system. That's one way that you can increase the, the fertility of the soil for the plant is to make it absorb the nutrients better by having an association with mycorrhizal fungi. And again the compost will help with that because it will help feed the fungi and having the slow organic release fertilizer will also help it because it can 
digest that. So when it comes to the fertilizer, organic fertilizers will help with the mycorrhizal fungi, whereas chemical ones won't. And you can use a whole variety of different fertilizers. It doesn't matter too much. I would just stick with a general balanced mix of feed. So I like to go for bloodfish and bone because that's balanced with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You can also use various manures like chicken manure pellets or maybe farmyard manure. Anything which has a good balanced mix of, of feed. That way you know throughout most of the season it shouldn't get any real deficiencies because it'll get all the nutrition it needs. I will go into nutrition in a later video a bit more carefully, but basically as long as you've got all the major nutrients at the beginning with the soil preparation, you should be off to a good start. There's one more thing that might help your sunflowers slightly and that's actually caffeine. There is actually a scientific journal which has looked into this and what they found is a small level of caffeine in the soil actually helps boost the plant height and also the growth rate. Now, one way you can incorporate this is use coffee grounds. So use coffee grounds or have a small amount of caffeine left in them. So if you dig that into the soil, that will boost your plant. But you do want to be careful, too much caffeine actually has a negative effect and will stunt the plant. So use quite a lot of coffee grounds, but don't go absolutely crazy and use, use really high levels of coffee ground, otherwise it can actually be a disadvantage. But coffee grounds are quite good because it also releases nitrogen when it breaks down, which is the most important uh, nutrition when it comes to growing the largest of sunflowers. And as well as releasing nitrogen, it also has a lot of organic matter which will help the structure of the soil and it can also help discourage pests such as slugs and snails. So this part of the video will be slightly different. I'll be just focusing on how I'm doing it personally for my garden and I'll just talk about a couple of points that I might have forgotten to mention earlier in the video. So basically when it comes to getting the site prepared, the bigger the better. I unfortunately don't have a very good location because I'm in North Scotland and I have to do it on the south facing wall and this is all concreted. And that area actually has a bigger growing space, but because this is not south facing, it's southeast facing, that hedge actually casts a lot of shade over midday. So I can't plant over there, even though I have a bigger planting area. So I'm planting in a, a smaller than optimum spot. With sunflowers, their roots can spread a total of five feet in, in width. So if you can, try to plant it about two meters wide, the planting hole, or about six foot wide. You want to get a bigger area as possible because it needs a really big space for all its roots. If you want to grow a giant sunflower that can grow up to 10 meters in height, you really need the biggest possible space for growing it because it needs a lot of root system to support all that growth. So what I'm going to do here, as I've just weeded it, I'm now going to show you how much the soil needs to be improved. So the soil at the, pro the moment is really rich because I've actually improved this top soil uh, in, the, in the previous years. And so the top of it is actually really nice. And a lot of top soils in gardens will probably look similar to this. It should be lots of organic matter, nice and dark. It shouldn't be too compacted. It should be nice and loose and it should also be have like a nice kind of crumbly texture like this one here where it's not like dust but at the same time it's not completely solid and compacted so that's about the texture you're looking for but with a lot of gardens the top soil is good but your subsoil is only about a foot deep so what you want to do is increase the depth of your top soil by first of all removing some of the soil so you can get down deeper bring up the subsoil and then add compost and feed to it that way it will greatly improve the quality of that subsoil and make it a bit more like a, a topsoil So what I've done is I've set some of my topsoil aside so that it's out of the way and I can dig down into the subsoil and you should see a notable colour difference. So this is my subsoil. It's a real mixture of sand, clay and stones so it depends where I dig. There's different layers of different things. You can see here for example, this is extremely sandy soil. There's almost no organic matter in that at all. It needs to be improved. The slightly deeper down soil, some of that's a bit clay but generally I've got quite a sandy soil so it's quite easy to improve. But you can really tell the nutrition of the soil if you compare it with some of your topsoil. Rich soil tends to be a nice dark colour, lots of organic matter. The subsoil you can see is a much lighter colour normally. So what you want to do is keep adding loads of compost until it looks more like this, with that nice kind of crumbly texture and darker appearance. So what I'm going to do now is dig this as deep as I can, and I'm going to add in lots of compost, lots of feed, and a little bit of mycorrhizal fungi as well. And as I dig, you should notice the colour start to change with the soil as it gets improved with the compost. And you also want to take out as many stones as you can. The stones, although they can help with a bit with drainage, if you have lots of large stones, it's just a big area of the soil where it can't hold any water or nutrients and where the roots can't grow. So take out as many stones as you can. Little tiny bits of gravel is 
fine, but any larger stones, probably larger than a grape. You want to remove it, it just increases the amount of space that the roots can grow in and that can, can contain and hold water and nutrients. So with adding all the compost you might find that the soil level rises, especially if you uncompact it. I wouldn't worry too much unless you've got loads of excess, because this will generally settle over the next few days as it starts to recompact again. It just won't become quite as compact as it was before. So you need to bear that in mind. If you take any soil away, it's best to get rid of the subsoil, or if you do take away topsoil, you can just use it elsewhere in the garden, or for potting up and planting. I'm going to leave mine slightly raised because I can get away with it here, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. So that's my soil now dug to a much deeper depth. It's nice and loose as well. It's good, uh, good topsoil all the way down to two foot. Now, if you want the biggest possible, as I say, dig a bigger area than I've done and dig it down to about a meter if possible, and that will give you the best possible results. And uh, you should notice that there will be lots of worms and microorganisms which start to inhabit the soil as you improve it further. So that's about all for this video, and you'll be seeing this plot of ground again when I start to plant up my sunflowers for myself and see how big I can get my sunflowers this year. Now I won't be breaking any records because of my climate and because I don't have a big enough grow a growing space for them but hopefully you'll be able to see them get to a decent size despite having suboptimal conditions.